let's talk about the shaft of the humerus. The humerus shaft consists of three borders and three surfaces. The three borders are anterior, lateral, and medial. The three surfaces they're forming are the anterolateral, anteromedial, and posterior surface. Let's talk about the anterior border first. The anterior border begins at, as I mentioned earlier, there was the intertubercular sulcus, a lesser tubercle, and a greater tubercle in the upper end of the humerus. When the lesser tubercle extends below, it is known as the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus. And when the greater tubercle's anterior margin prolongs below, it forms the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove. So the shaft consists of anterior border, which is formed by the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus in its upper part. In its middle part, it is interfered by a tuberosity known as the deltoid tuberosity. And in its lower part, it is smooth and rounded. So this was the anterior border of the humerus. Let's talk about the medial border. The medial border in its upper part is the medial lip of the bicipital groove. This medial border then extends downwards and in its middle part, it has a rough impression, which we will talk about further when we'll talk about the muscle attachments. And then it continues down as the medial supracondylar ridge. Let's talk about the lateral border. The lateral border begins, it begins from the posterior margin of the greater tubercle. It extends down below and in its middle part, it is interfered by this groove, which is the radial groove through which the radial nerve will pass. And it continues downwards as the supracondylar ridge. Now let's talk about the surfaces. The surface between the anterior border and the medial border is known as the anteromedial surface. The anteromedial surface has a characteristic nutrient foramen in its middle part. It is a foramen that supplies nutrition to the bone. The anteromedial surface in its upper part is narrow, forming the floor of the groove and below it is more wide. Let's talk about the anterolateral surface. This lies between the anterior and the lateral border. The anterolateral surface is characteristic in its middle part as it is marked by a V-shaped tuberosity as this entire area above this tuberosity is covered by the deltoid muscle and the V-shaped tuberosity gives insertion to the deltoid muscle, hence it is a tuberosity. Then we have the posterior surface. The posterior surface is characterized by an oblique ridge in its upper part and in its lower part, then again, it consists of a part of the radial groove. So that's all about the three borders and three surfaces. Join me in the next video where I talk about the various muscle attachments on the humerus bone. Thank you so much for watching.